Welcome to the Dice Tower, a podcast all about board and card games and the people who play them. Today's episode, number six, is part of our classic series and was originally aired June 25th, 2005. This week's episode of the Dice Tower is brought to you by Tenki Games, publisher of Chang Chang, the first game in which you really build the Great Wall of China. To discover all the features of Chang Chang, go to www.tenkigames.com. And now, here's your host, Tom Vassell. Well, hello, folks, and welcome to episode number six. This is the beginning of perhaps I don't maybe our, our love affair with Origins Game Expo. It was it was and still remains really the only game conference that we really could go to. And even now, because it's during the summer, and that's when I have off from school and just a chance to go back to America. And, you know, we really grew to like Origins. Now, it's interesting as we look back at this episode, the things that we liked and were interested in and how some of those things have changed. If you see, here I was mocking the Origins Awards in this episode. And when you listen to the list of games that they were awarding, they're really not, it's really not that bad of a list. And as I talk about the games I played, that they I was talking about my Origins 2004, which is four Origins ago, and just how things have changed since then. Uh, it was kind of a interesting experiment for us. We basically just took the Origins pre-registration book and we're going through it page by page. And we split it over two episodes. We recorded this one is our top five things that we enjoyed about Origins 2004. And then the next one was our top five things that we were looking forward to. And so you hear different things. And, and then the year after that, I managed to put it together in a show that was a little bit tighter talking about Origins 2006. But... Anyway, enough of me jibber-jabbering. Let's get to the show. Well, welcome to the Dice Tower. I'm Tom Vassell. And I'm not. Wait, that's someone else's little thing. I'm Joe Stephman. <laughs> yeah, I think someone said something in one of our episodes about not knowing who we were. I'm Joe. <laughs> I'm Tom. No, no actually, that, that sounds like I was me. listening to Skip Maloney's, or Skip Mahoney. Um, he was interviewing... Dirk and Aldi on Geekspeak, yeah. and he said that sometimes turning in, he wouldn't know who they were or what they were. So for, if this is the first episode you've listened to, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm a reviewer and interviewer of board games on the internet, but that's just my hobby. My real day job is I'm a missionary in South Korea. I'm Joe Stedman. I like war games, miniature games, confrontational games, and you'll probably catch me playing Euro games, and I'm also a missionary in Korea. So there's two of us at least. Uh, this is our sixth episode, and we're actually recording it before our fifth episode. Yeah, go figure. And the reason for that is because Joe's quitting the radio station. No, I'm not. You uh, wish. I. You get another Euro. I wrote that in the script. There's nothing you could do to change it. Because Tom's in charge. <laughs> All right. Well, actually, th what we're doing is uh, over the summer we're going to slow down a little bit and play an episode every two weeks, and. This is the first of those, and they're all pre-recorded. And the reason right. they're pre-recorded is because of Joe. Yeah, I'm going back to the States this summer. My wife has not been home in three years. It'll be a good chance for us to uh, see the family, you know, and get around, see some churches and whatnot. I get to go to Origins, which is always a positive thing. But the main reason is just to go home. Um, missionaries, we call it a, a furlough. This is kind of like a mini furlough because it's only two months long. Normally a furlough is a year. But we're going back for two months, so... Um, so we're going to pre-record some shows because we know that everyone will just miss us so much if we go off the air for the whole summer. So. Yes, heaven forbid we would do something like that. <laughs> um, anyway, welcome to the Dice Tower. Uh, this is a show about board games, mostly uh, war games and Euro games, but sometimes we touch on RPGs, CCGs, and miniatures. I sure. call them the the uh, the bottom three. The bo The big two are are Euro games and war games. Right, right. That's that's the cream of the crop. And in a future episode, we're going to talk about the different differentiation between the different kinds of games. Yeah, because I do think we need to define all those categories better. What this is, this is the first of a two-part episode. We're now going to, at the end, we'll leave a to be continued. Dun, 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 dun. And hopefully it will be better than the lost finale. <laughs> oh, man. That, that really we actually will, will give you some, some answers instead of leaving you with 50 million more questions. How many people out there listen to the or watch the TV show Lost? I mean, Tom and I, we can't even watch it on TV. We have to go through the pain of downloading it. BitTorrent. Oh, don't arrest us. It's South Korea, man. <laughs> South Korea, it's legal. <laughs> well, uh, I think what's down in the hatch 
is a pile of board games. A pile of board games? A pile. The original Cosmic now, Encounter, Eon, of... with all the expansions, oh. uh, The Longest Day from Avalon Hill, and Shrink. Now, who, who on the island would be war gamers and who would be Euro gamers? <laughs> oh, that's a hard one. Hurley would be an American gamer. Definitely an American gamer, Hurley. I think Locke would be a... Uh, He'd be a war gamer, I think. Yeah, you're probably right. Anyone who throws knives around. Because <laughs> um, that's what I do on my free time. The boy, um, Michael, or is it Charlie? No, I forget the boy's name. Charlie would be a Euro gamer, because he would, he would use it as a way to pick up girls. <laughs> anyway, what kind of topic are we on? <laughs> what we're doing here is a, uh, the first of a two-part episode yes. where we will talk about origins. Now, let me start by saying that origins is looked down by some people. They say that there's better, better um, well, what are conventions. The con like okay, well, what are the big, what are the big conventions that are out there? All right, the biggest convention probably for Euro games would be Essen. The biggest convention for war games probably be WBC or, or Consum. Uh, I don't know. And then there's also the ultra secret. Not it's not secret. The Gathering of Friends. Hosted by Alan Moon. Invite only, although there seems a lot, well, a lot we, of people we both, go there. Haven't we both got invites? We, yeah, we have. But, but we just can't make it from Korea. No. So some people on the internet will say these are better than Origins. You don't want to go to Origins. And look, Origins, I think it's great. Yeah. And since that's the one I've been to and the one I'm going to, that's what we're going to talk about. You know, Origins, is a, from what I understand, is a good uh, mix because there's, there's equal, it's equal parts, Euro games, war games, miniature games, CCGs. You know, it's not, it's not like uh, other. Con Sorry, that was the dice. <laughs> it was a delayed reaction. Right, thanks. It's not like other conventions where they specialize in one thing. So it works good for Tom and I since we got. It seems to be what people have told us different taste in games. Although we just did have a, a good week of games, we'll talk about that yeah. in episode five, which you've already heard. When we go so back, we'll go back to the future. <laughs> So you've already heard us talk about the games we played this week, but it was, it was a good week of games, a really good week. But anyway, Origins. So what I have here in front of me is the Origins uh, pre-registration book. And as no, we go through this, we're going to talk about our, every once in a while, we'll randomly insert our top five games we played at the last Origins. Right, right. Now, uh, when is Origins? What are the dates? Oh, well, it should say right here. June 30th, July 3rd, 2005. Uh, the, the second episode of the show will actually be aired on... June 29th, hopefully. Yeah. So, you right. can. Cool. Now, uh, when are probably too late for people to make up their minds. <laughs> okay, let's go. Let's fly over there. Now, uh, I'm arriving on Wednesday. Are you gonna take a uh, land on Wednesday yourself, Tom? Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna be getting in late at night. Hopefully, same I'll get here. in early enough to register. I'm gonna get in at eight o'clock or so, seven or eight. Hey, we'll probably be in the same plane or come or at the airport at the same time. What time's your plane then? Like eight eight o'clock, I think. Yeah, mine's right around there somewhere. What the. Maybe we can share a ride. <laughs> huh. And then as soon as we get there, we split. Yep, and I'll see you on Sunday night. <laughs> so, no, actually, we, we usually ate together because we, oh, we, both, we both agreed was that the... Main Street, what was that thing called? It was a farmer's market nearby. Right across the street from the convention center. It's this, oh, Origins is in Columbus, Ohio, downtown Columbus, Ohio. It's this huge convention center. And, uh... Yeah, right, we, we, we love to eat right across the street. There's this... Next to it was like a block away. But yeah, it's a block away. But man, oh, what that, look at that submarine sandwich. Yes, there was this older gentleman there who made the best sandwich huge. I've ever had. Tremendous. I think part of it too, Tom, is that we're missionaries and we don't get a chance to eat very much American food. <laughs> but I still grew up in Philadelphia area where the best sandwiches in the world are made and it was better. I hate to give that kind of designation then, to then Ohio. They had, a, they had a salsa place, remember that? Oh, yes. I got raspberry salsa. Does that sound weird or what? Well, it was really good. It was good. <laughs> so if you're going to Origins, you should check that place out. <laughs> Meet us there. That's where we'll be eating we'll, lunch. We'll be eating lunch there probably every day. I'm looking forward to meeting a lot of people from the Internet there, from yeah. Board Game Geek, and Joe has a, a friend or two from Consum World. Maybe two. Uh, <laughs> I think you're at, estranged from one of them. Yeah. So you're down think, to one. Yeah, there you go. Anyway, so to get this thing started, let's look at the, the front cover here uh, as Hideous as that may be. What is that? I don't know. On the front is a picture of a... Is it a rabbit? I think it's a rabbit with a humongous nose. He's holding a 12-sided die. That's what it is. It's one of those LP, those uh, live-action role-playing game guys. <laughs> I guess. I, I sure hope this isn't the artwork you're using for the t-shirts and stuff because I would not get it. It looks... It's really I mean, bad. with all due respect to the artist, I'm sure that in his mind that's a very beautiful thing. But... 
I just really bad. All right, we better turn the page. This is <laughs> this is turning us off from Origins. Who runs Origins? That's Gamma, right? <laughs> anyway, there's an advertisement here from Strike Zone, and I don't know what else to say about this except it says they buy singles, and uh, so we can get rid of all our CCGs there. Yeah, well, speaking of C there will be CCG people there. And uh, so, what do you think of CCG people, Tom? Well, I mean, the fact that I was one for my pretty much my whole college career, that's all I played. All that money I could have bought board games with. Do you, remember, I, do you remember last year when we first got there, those those two uh, those two young guys that were overweight kind of and they really stinky and they were uh, Pokemon players? Remember that? Or was we not standing together in line when I had to stand next to that Pokemon player for We was hour. not standing in line. Weez was? <laughs> I was waiting for you at the airport. Remember you were supposed to come pick me up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then I finally decided to, just, to, to skip out on you. <laughs> Sorry. Either way, we both made it there. And anyway, I had to stand in line next to some Pokemon player. My goodness. Well, okay, CCG players do get a bad rap. I will say that 50% of it's deserved. And I would say more. Well, All right, if you're a CCG player, we challenge you to <laughs> we, chal we challenge you to uh, meet us at Origins and show us who you are. Tell us, you know, from the Dice Tower, you know, da da da, and then, you know, we'll smell you. And then if we smell you and you smell good, we'll talk about that on the air after Origins. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but if you can make a challenge like that, you should probably make it so that it's CCG only. CCG only, right? Because if it's just yeah, well, there's there's lots of crossovers, you know. For people that, who's the first time in the end gateway of games, a CCG is a collectible card game. Which, yeah, basically it's a card game like with crack mixed in it. Yeah, and if you want to know more, look it up on the internet. We don't have an hour to explain it to you. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, the, the CCG hall at the Origins is a huge place. It's huge, like a size I of went a in there looking for a friend of mine, and it's I like walked around for basketball, like a, like a professional basketball stadium. That's bigger than that, probably. It's huge. It's really, really big. Hundreds and hundreds of tables of people playing CCGs. Yeah, well. What were the main CCGs that were there last year? Pokemon. The Magic. Versus system had just come out, and they had that ten thousand dollar tournament, so that was a big deal. Magic, yeah. of course, was huge. Um, Pokemon was bigger. Lord than, of the Rings. I, thought, I never realized Pokemon was so big. I thought it was like a kids game. Well, it still is a kids game. You won't find too many adults playing it seriously. Uh, really? That and uh, what's the other one? Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh. That was another big one. I was talking to Richard Garfield in my interview. The more I keep mentioning this, the more people aren't going to have to read the interview. But <laughs> Richard Garfield said that both Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh have both outsold Magic by far. Really? Yeah. I never would have guessed that. Well, it's just because of their initial thing. There's I think Magic stigma? has much, much more staying power. Maybe. You're not going to find an 80-year-old guy playing Pokemon. Magic. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, Pokemon. Pokemon. All right, the next page uh, says, welcome, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I encourage you to check out the highlight pages, blah, blah, blah. And it shows the Gamma staff. Do you know any of those names in that list? I went through and looked through. I know Mark Santis. Was that Santalio? Santi Santilio. San he keeps on posting on Consim. But other than that. Oh, really? Okay. This guy here, Anthony Galella, I looked him up, and he has uh, helped design the game Dwarven Dig. You ever hear of it? I think I have. It's made by Kenzer and Co. And I don't know much about it. It got really not poor reviews. Well, some people gave it poor reviews. I was interested in it, but it faded out, and so I guess it's gone now. I what don't is, know. What is that Mark's guy's official job title? Program manager. <clears throat> oh, he's like the head, the head dude? I, no, the head dude is Anthony Galella. Oh. Anyway, I don't know any of these people. Um, I really wish, well, John Caulfield, I know him because I dealt with him to get my press pass. But I really wish there was more board gaming orientation. It seems like a lot. there's a lot of very heavy orientation towards role playing. I, I would say that role playing is probably. But it's such a minor part of Origins. I wouldn't say minor. It's a major part. I don't think it's it, the major part. Though. I don't think it's even. Uh, I, I would say it holds like 25 percent. Well. Not even. No, 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 no. It's just they stick out so bad because they walk around in their crazy what, outfits. What do you think is the biggest thing? CCGs. It's between CCGs and miniatures. No, because miniatures is only a small part. The biggest thing is the distributors room. <laughs> Well, we'll get to that. We love the distributors room. All right, we'll turn the page. Gundam War collectible card game. Mmm. Mmm. All right. The War College. Did you do anything with the War College last year? I didn't have time. I really wanted to. It sounded intriguing, but I came to play games, not to listen to lectures. Yeah, and I, I guess that's the way I feel. If, if there was a War College in my area, I would say, oh, I'll go listen to some of that stuff. But I would definitely go. Not when I could go play games. 
I was torn. I'm, I'm a history teacher by trade. You know, I'm a missionary, but I teach history in the school I teach at, and I really love history, but I don't know. I want to play games. Well, the, the keynote speaker is Harry Turtledove. Do you know who he is? Mm. says he's an alternate history author. I do love alternate history. What would happen if Joe and I had never met? <laughs> uh, well, you think about that too long. Mm, happiness for me. <laughs> and uh, there's a lot of different people from the Army here, a lot of people who probably are army wannabes <laughs> you know that i know more about military history than you ever will yeah armchair generals definitely armchair generals well i guess there's not a whole lot more to say about the war college although if you do want to learn about history i guess it's a good thing to go to I mean, there's a lot of people i'd like to meet frank chadwick james dunnigan there's a lot of big names in the war gaming arena yeah. and those guys are going to be rubbing shoulders with everybody anyway so it's not like you have to go to the war college to talk to these guys Ooh, that's a good point so that's something i really liked about origins i like the fact that I was able to meet with people and talk to them, and there was none of this. Oh yeah, I'll sign your autograph stuff. Dude, remember we we're, we're, remember we we're sitting there and we we're talking, and all of a sudden Larry Harris and I know. Okay, Larry Harris is the guy who designed Access and Allies, and say what you want about Access and Allies, but it's still one of the most popular, at least in my childhood. It was the most popular game between in my family and all my friends in high school, and when I was in the army, everyone it seems like every soldier I've ever met has heard of Access and Allies. Anyway, this like godlike figure. <laughs> with a with a bit of a light aura shining off him. Yes. <laughs> he just walks up and he's talking to us. I don't even know who he was. He's just like some some Joe, you know. Hey, what's going on? I oh. look at it, I look at his name tag. It says Larry Harris, and I was like, Larry Harris? Who is Larry? And then ding, and I was like, oh, and then I couldn't even talk anymore. Oh, he yelled at me though, right? Yeah, he did yell at you, didn't he? Well, because I had just recently reviewed Access and Allies Revised, and because it didn't, I I you didn't, credit it. You didn't credit him, I, right? I didn't credit him, and he actually. I, I should have, and for that, I now publicly go over the air. Apologize, Larry. It is your game. Are they, they're still not producing the original game, right? No, but we were in a... Well, yeah, we were in a games cafe in Korea. And we saw, what, like 20 copies of shrink wrap? 20 copies of Access Now is the original Milton Bradley game in shrink wrap. Like, what in the world? It's like some kind of, you know, Raiders of the Lost Ark movie, and they found the ship in it. Well, if we found 20 copies of Fortress America shrink wrap, we'd be buying them and selling them on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> 20 copies of any Chinatown or any other. All right, so know. we'll 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 switch off the war page thing. Pre-registration oh. information. Hey, that's one thing. I don't know. Maybe it was just the time that I went, but I didn't think that the lines were long to get registered. Did you? No. The, the, well, we went early, but we even early, when yeah. I walked by, it didn't look bad. If you pre-register, the lines aren't bad at all. It's the people that are doing on-site that was the long lines. But I didn't even think last year the lines were that bad. You told me the li year before that. The year before bad. that was really bad. Well, I think it's just they're getting more efficient. I think the price is not really that bad of a deal. You talk about going to an amusement park for one day, it costs you 50 bucks. Easy. Easy, yeah. You talk about going, and a four-day pass here, 50, 60 bucks, is a really good deal to mm -hmm. play games the whole time. And so, they, they don't kick you out. I mean, you could basically sleep there for all four days if you wanted to. <laughs> I didn't see too many people doing that, but I did see a couple. I did see a couple. And I, did, I never wanted to do that. How am I going to defend my games? We, we, where did we sleep? We, we, we hoteled together, didn't we? Oh, yeah, yeah. We stayed at the Econo Lodge, right? Uh, no. I mean, yes, we did, but we weren't together. I would just happen to <laughs> Whatever, stack up in your room. <laughs> Remember our game? When we, by the end of the Origins, if you went into our room at the hotel while we were gone, there was like hundreds of copies of board games. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's a wonder we were able to bring them all back. Oh, it's a good thing I brought a pickup truck. We went and bought these big blue bins. Yeah, the big Tupperware totes. Filled them up. I filled up two. Joe filled up one. Yeah because he buys more expensive board games. Yeah, and yeah, that's the reason. I, I buy the cheaper Euro games. And everyone is handing you copies of games. Well, not everyone. But if you're willing to do so... Same here, I'll take them. We'll talk about them on the air. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I take these blue bins and I actually ship them to Korea, but I'm, I still haven't decided what I'm going to do this year. Take two huge suitcases that are empty. I'm going to be more selective this year because last year I was just so amazed that people were willing to give me games, and I was so amazed by all the games that were available for sale, I just bought too much. And also, people who want to trade me for a, a copy of Lineage 2 or maybe another Korean game that I yeah, not too many of them. I was thinking about bringing home a big uh, case of those Japanese flower cards. Because they can buy those fairly cheap over here. Oh, the, yeah, they're these little plastic red cards the that they Koreans play. call them Ghostop, Ghostop cards, but... Um, I don't the, even know the, how to play in it. In the board game database, they're called uh, Japanese flower cards. Huh. It's a pretty interesting game. So but if you're interested in trading, tell me. Sure. Because I'm not bringing up. anything. I'm not bringing anything else back. No. Now when I come back, I play. I am bringing some games home with me. I'm bringing bringing uh, 
Atlantic Storm, um, We the People, and then a couple of family games for my family when I visit and whatnot. But I haven't decided if I'm going to bring anything to play. But I got I'm, G- I'm GM so in a few games. Do. I'm GM in a few games in the War Room over there at Origins, and so I got to bring some games. Yeah, but you're taking your whole family. So how many suitcases you got? Nine. Yeah, I'm not bringing my whole family to Origins. No, but I mean, you have that much to bring. Oh, I'm America. bringing the whole family back to the states. Yeah, I got nine suitcases. Nine suitcases. <laughs> it's two per person. Nine suitcases. And one and for the baby. If you if you see my wife, she's only about five foot tall and about a hundred pounds soaking wet. So. I, it, basically, I'm going to be carrying five suitcases, six suitcases, and my wife will have three kids strapped to her. <laughs> hey, we're making good time here. We're now on page five. <laughs> uh, here they just give all their uh, administrative information. Here we can give our, our tips. Let's see, badges. We don't need no stinking badges. <laughs> uh, I don't have that quote, do I? But we'll, we'll no, play badges our, are cool. We'll play our uh, obligatory What's scumbag your name, scumbag? <laughs> oh, that works for badges, right? <laughs> yeah. There you go. All right, so now the badges are cool because you were jealous of my badge last year. Admit it, Tom. My badge had Korea on it. What did your badge say? Pennsylvania. <laughs> that's because that's where I had him send the. You had him send the registration book to Pennsylvania. So everyone's like, "Ooh, you're from Korea." And Tom walked by. Oh, Tom from Pennsylvania. Yeah, people Ooh. avoided me. <laughs> no, so you have your badge. It's got your name on it. And then, if I was you, I wouldn't spend the money on one of the fancy dancy bag badge. Uh, what's a, the badge holders? Unless you. I don't know. I I got mine from last year, and it was like I used it the first day, and after that it kind of rubbed Some my neck. Some people like off. those. They keep they keep money in them. I think it made my neck sore, so I just got rid of it. Yeah, I don't I don't like them either. But you could get these little ribbons on it. The ribbons are the cool part. So what ribbons say, are there? There's the well. Here's the ribbons last year. Are they in a book? We we might be getting ahead of ourselves here. I don't think so. Maybe. There's the I had the war room. I highly 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 recommend getting the war room ribbon, of course. And that's, uh, you can go in there and play games, open gaming, and uh, over on the far side of Origins where they're right. playing war games. And then that's 10 bucks. Is it 10, is it 10 or 15 bucks? I thought it was 25 Maybe I'm wrong. 15, uh, whatever the cost, I don't know. Because, you know, me and you are independently wealthy, so money's not really an issue. Oh, of course not. <laughs> then there was a CABS, which stands for the Columbus Area Board Gaming Society. And me and Joe got one of those last year, too. They just We're honorary members, right? Uh, Cause we so I said, them. okay. Yeah, honorary members of CABS. Then there was one that I got for doing a puzzle. There was this, this riddle place. I think Cloud Games was the name of the company. Oh, yeah. And if you answered the riddle, you got one. Joe never got one. Yeah, I didn't even try, Tom. No, you did. You went by and you couldn't do it. I did not try. I just went by and looked at it. I, I can't like, do it. I like it. They're Dude. like, what has four legs and barks like a dog? And Joe said cat. So they said no. <laughs> they also had a chicken <laughs> one. And Joe and I were able to get that one. We argued yeah. for a while, and we finally had to show him our insurance cards. It was yeah, the only, our insurance cards that said we were teachers. It was the only thing we had proof that we were teachers, because I guess we and we don't look the part. This year we get a special badge. Ooh, the press pass. We both get press Whoa. passes this year. So, so that's exciting. That might, let, that might let us get into the After a while, though, room. I started feeling like a nerd with all these pat with all these. I had like six ribbons. It reminded me, me of vacation. But me, remind me of vacation Bible school. If you're a Christian, you know what I'm talking about. So I had all these ribbons. <laughs> Woohoo! I memorized my Bible verse. So this year, I won't get more than one or two ribbons. And if I do get more than one, I'll hide them in my pocket. <laughs> uh, costumes and weapons. We saw some people with some pretty funky costumes, but it wasn't as bad as people say it was. Two I saw years maybe ago. one in a. A thousand people was wearing a costume. Two years ago, there was Klingons walking around. <laughs> yeah, but what did we see this year? I saw a stormtrooper. I saw a couple people in medieval costumes. Ooh, stormtrooper! Remember that back in the corner of the display room, they had that X-wing. Ooh, that was cool. But you had to pay like they had like a, a life-size X-wing fighter, and a full costume, and you could get into the costume and pose next to the X-wing. But you had to pay like 50 bucks for your picture taken or something. So I told Joe that I would Photoshop him in for 40. <laughs> we only know one person between me and Tom that would probably pay to do it. Food and beverage, we already talked about that. There's not, there, there's a couple places right there that sell snacks. They're really expensive. Very expensive. There's a food court that's, I don't know, a good five minute walk. The, the convention place is huge. Maybe a 10 minute walk. It's like a maze to yeah. find it, but it's okay, food court. Now I'm gonna do, I, I learned a valuable lesson last year. If you're going to Origins or any convention, do this. A lot of the old grog nerds, a lot of the old war game guys, they had coolers. <laughs> Just like you're going to a fish or going out to a barbecue, and underneath the gaming table, they'd have a cooler full of sodas and sandwiches and whatever, and they'd pull it out in between games and they'd have soda. And so, I'm gonna That's do that. I'm, I think I'm gonna bring a cooler this year. Wait a minute, it says no outside food. Maybe oh, well, then again, I didn't, I didn't see nothing. Joe, you just <laughs> ruined it for no! everybody. No, I just made that up. So actually, yeah, sure. <laughs> Security. All right, blah blah blah. Lost the found smoking. 
All right, next page is the pre-registration form, but we don't need to do that because we're both registered. Do, 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 do. And why would you use the pre-registration form when there's something that was invented by Al Gore? It's called the Internet. Well, yes. Thank you. You know, you know Al Gore. Thank you, Al, for the Internet. <laughs> what will we ever do without it? <coughs> the next page shows a full-page advertisement of Pirates of the Crimson Coast. Uh, I like people to send us comments about this game because I've read the rules. Looks interesting. Blah. But I'm just afraid to get caught up in another collectible game. The ships are pretty cool, putting them together. They look pretty cool. You got one on your desk, don't you? I did, until a kid smashed it. But I have... A I kid didn't. smashed it? Well, Andy. Uh, on purpose? No, I don't think. Anyway, I don't know about these collectible card games. They're okay, but we'll, we'll see. Maybe we should use this as an opportunity to interject our first of our top five. Oh, that's a good idea. I want you to do your number five. All right, see. these are the top five games we played last year. For me, the top, the number five was Sleuth. And maybe it wasn't the, my favorite game per se, it was certainly memorable. Because we played Sleuth, which is an old game by Sid Saxon, it was republished by Face to Face Games with seven people. Um, Lawrence Whalen, the on, president right. of yeah, Face to Face Games, taught it to us. I don't remember everyone who was there. I think Anya Sellers was, I, Ward Batty, a couple other people, and man, it was such a brain burner. Mike Fitzgerald won, I believe. <laughs> he, he won every game I played with him, I, I think. But that game gives me it a was, headache. We were sitting there scribbling down all this information, and War Batty said, I'm writing down stuff, I don't even know why. He filled out two whole sides of the card, this minutia writing, and it was about, and he, he had no <laughs> clue who it was. I tell you, if you want to play a brain burner, play Sleuth with seven players. It was absolutely just mind-numbing. We played it probably for two hours, but it was, it was a lot of fun in a mind-numbing sort of way. So that's why I picked it for number five. <laughs> Oh, my number five was not nearly that complicated. My number five was Bang. I played a game of Bang in the war room. And, oh, and I watched this game. It was a good it, game. It was a good game. I was a, I was a deputy, and it was me, the deputy, and a renegade, and you, you, the it, sheriff. The sheriff, I mean. Yeah, me. The, it was me, the sheriff, and the renegade, and it came down to the sheriff's turn, and he had the renegade on one side, the deputy on the other. We both had one health left. And he had, to, he, had to, he had a bang, and neither one of us, me or the Renegade, neither one of us had uh, a mist. So he could kill one of us, and it just came down to pure diplomacy, and he chose to kill, he chose to kill me, so he lost. <laughs> Which was really interesting. I, I, just at the end, they were both sitting there screaming at each other. I'm like, I am the deputy, you idiot! <laughs> and the sheriff just kind of like, uh, uh, who do I pick? It was a really funny game to watch. It's not often I see a game like that end up so well. It was fun. It's the first time I played it with uh, all grown men. I mean, normally when I play the game, there's a couple teenagers mixed in there or some ladies. It was interesting to play with all guys. Yeah, I, I guess that's true. Have you ever played with just all? No, it's usually you know, wives and stuff we bring out bang. Um, my wife likes it. I, I like it with the expansions. Yeah, we sent in some... Uh, we sent in some recommendations for new cards, but I didn't understand these directions. Yeah, we messed the rules. And so up. I sent him all these great ideas for cards, but they, uh, man. Well, the next rules that they have, we, we, we can send in the cards correctly. Right. This episode of the Dice Tower is sponsored by Tenki Games, makers of Chang Chang, a strategy board game set in ancient China. Take the role of one of the Chinese officers commissioned to build the Great Wall of China and compete with the other players to protect the most valuable Chinese provinces while gaining the favor of the emperor. But pay attention, as the Mongols are already at the borders. Will you be the most clever and skillful? Check it out at www.tenkigames.com. Okay, our next uh, section of the, the book here, it just shows a map of the center. Okay, so if you look at coordinate X1, now start drawing this out. Go left, <laughs> five pixels, down six pixels. Shut up. It's like the old role-playing games when you had to draw the maps out. Now they have these nice computerized things you can do. Yeah. Anyway, there's one thing I, I did think kind of interesting. If you look at the map, it looks pretty simplistic, but when you actually go into the convention hall yeah. of the ex exhibitors, it seems like even I tried to walk a pattern so I would hit every exhibitor, I still missed a lot of them. Because it's all, it's not, it's all shaped weird. Yeah, it's shaped strangely. There's small so aisles and big aisles. And or you're like walking around a corner and you want to talk to these corner people, you talk to them, then you slide around the corner, but you know, just you keep moving naturally and you miss a whole section. So go through it two or three times. You There's should, a lot plan, of stuff you should plan on spending a whole day just in that room. At I think, least. I think what they've done here is they've added longer 
exhibit hall times, they said something earlier about how they changed the time on, on yeah, Thursday. Yeah, because that, that aggravated me last year because I wanted to they, – they wouldn't let us in until like 2 or 3 in the afternoon the first day. And then they all kicked us out on Sunday night. I mean, Sunday afternoon it seemed like. Yeah, man, I, I didn't want to leave. I was having such a good time in there, but – some yeah. guy came up and said, sorry, you must leave You now. must leave. You're not like, a... It was like the door Nazi. He was like, <laughs> was he just, oh yeah, they had like stormtroopers guarding, guarding the door. Well, it wasn't a stormtrooper. It was some some guy filled with power. Power! But there was earlier in the week a stormtrooper at the guarding the door, right? Yeah, there yeah. was. And I would laugh because what's a stormtrooper going to do? <laughs> I'm not afraid of stormtroopers. I've we, seen Star Wars. We all <laughs> <laughs> What no, are they going to do? No, we just saw episode three. We did see episode three. And the stormtroopers are a little bit more effective in that No, one. those are still clone troopers because, you know, magically in the 20 years from the oh, end of the episode three episode four. Once they stopped four, becoming clones, they weren't good anymore? They're the copies of copies of copies, and so they get stupider and stupider. Like that movie with Michael Keating. That's a good idea. That's all I can figure because they got really stiff. And they changed their helmets too, so I mean. Yeah, they were cooler. They were cool. Clone, clone troopers were cooler. Yeah, we're, we're clone troopers, not stormtroopers. And you notice like in episode three, they had like camouflage and everything, stormtroopers. That was pretty cool. Speaking of which, Joe and I did see episode three of Star Wars, and I highly enjoyed it. It was really good. I, I don't know where I'd rank it in the whole set of six. I still but hold, it was definitely the best of the first three. I still hold to my problems with the huge gaps in technology for 20 years at the end of the clone at the end of the clone wars between the time of that and the new hope it's just i don't know all right well we're not doing that rant today <laughs> there's a list of all the exhibitors but there's lots of blank spots so i'm assuming they're adding in yeah a there, lot of there was hardly any open slots by the time we got going speaking last of year. which what we're going through now is the pre-registration book when you get to origins they give you the registration book which is a lot cooler they usually give you a bag full of... Yeah, they give you like a little doo or a little uh, gift bag or something. And there's like some... Surprise! Special cards from Collectible Card Advertisements or, and... Yeah, free game they give us a, They gave us a die last year, remember? Which is cool. But then you had to go to the... You had to go to the dice guy, the dice guy and, and, and buy, buy the, the rest set. of the set. Because <laughs> it was just one die out of a six die set. But, but we do have a copy of that set now. <laughs> so I really like dice. That's one of my favorite things to do at Origins is buy dice. Yeah, they, they have, have the, a, the bucket of dice. But cooler than that was a place that a guy sold five-sided dice, seven-sided dice. Uh, yeah, it's a weird one. Didn't you a three-sided die? A three-sided die. It's kind of shaped like a football. And I stopped to talk to him about this, and he went on for half an hour. I finally had to say, uh, i gotta got to be somewhere. And just <laughs> Some more side important off. to talk to the dice guy. <laughs> but it, he was, he was you know, really smart about the dice. They were pretty expensive. Though. So here, here's a question for the listeners. Would you pay... Uh, let's say five dollars for a, a a mug full of random dice that you just scoop into a big barrel, or would you pay twice that to hand select the dice that you want to fill your mug with? I think I'm going to answer that question. And this year when I go, I'm going to I'm going to pay to select for myself. You are really. And the reason is because there's a lot of color combinations I just don't like and never use. I don't like the speckled green with like red lettering. It's too hard to see. Right. I and there's some colors that just look really sharp. When I play 40k with one of my friends, he has these dice, and I can't stand him because when he rolls all of his armor saves or whatever, if you're familiar with the, the game, he's rolling like 15 dice, and I can't read them. I gotta like stand right above him and look straight at him, otherwise you can't read them, and I hate that. So. Well, here's the uh, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The the nine sponsors of Origins. No, these are new releases. Oh. Okay. The nine sponsors. So we'll just. Say our thoughts. Whiz kids, good or bad? <laughs> I'll give that a. What's, what's what the guy say? We have to roll dice. Oh, we? roll dice. Um, <laughs> so we have to roll some dice. So oh, we have to roll a ten-sided die because the one guy says everyone is everyone has been so used to the ten. The rating system thinks the board game geek of tens, and so we have to rate. We have to roll ten-sided. It's die. hard to rate a company though. Whiz kids, uh, rate them uh, a two. <laughs> I rate them a five because I think they're brilliant at the same time evil. <laughs> I think Sauron got a little got used got hold of them. There. That, for those of you who don't know, WizKid has introduced the very very popular clicks games, which have started a whole new trend of miniatures, which is neat. But it what is, else, WizKids? WizKids has the Axis and Allies games, right? The new no, ones. No, 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 no. No, that's Wizards of the Coast. I always get. WizKids those. also does the Pirates of the Spanish Main. Right. WizKids and Wizards of the Coast are two different companies, right? That's correct. Yeah, they're, they're always you know. They're actually new, get pretty big new. competitors now. Yeah, get with their new miniatures new. games. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Whoa. Sorry, I was not speaking into it. Now you can hear me. I can hear you, much Tom. Clearly. Can you hear All me right. now? Can you hear me now? The next one is AEG, can you hear me now? Entertainment can you hear me now? Group. So let's roll for them and see what we get. Right. You know who they are? 
Uh, I'll give them, uh, who are they? What do they make? Question mark. Uh, they make a bunch of CCGs. The only one I played is that 7th C CCG I was telling you about. They do RPG stuff too? Yeah. I don't do a whole lot of RPGs. All right, next one. Game Station. No info on website. <laughs> so they sponsored the show. but That sounds like a blooper there. I mean. Oh, this this book is riddled with errors. Uh, when we get to the back in the sessions, the the different board games that are run by CABS, the Columbus Area Board Gaming Group, a lot of them say no. No, no, no. No. Where is it? Here, I'm skipping to the end. I'm kind of cheating. I'm going into the second episode already. But where is it? Look here. So Tom's got tattooed on his forehead. No. No, look. No, 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 no. That's on page what is, what is that 159. Supposed to, what is that supposed to mean? Who knows? All right, next. Upper deck. And if you're like me, upper deck to you means baseball cards. Baseball. That's the first when thing we were I kids, thought. they were the baseball cards. Yeah, because there was Tops and Dunross and Fleer. But the rich kids had upper deck. <coughs> yeah. I was always but joking. they also make what Yu-Gi-Oh trading card game, <laughs> Marvel Comics trading the, card. You know, one thing that Yu-Gi-Oh is good for is that their card protectors they make for Yu-Gi-Oh work really good for some for some of the games that we play. <laughs> like my uh, up front uses Yu-Gi-Oh size cards. Hmm. That is interesting. All right. Well, so we roll for them, and I, but we have to find someone here that we know. Bondi toys. I don't know. What Power is, Rangers. What is Bondi? The Iron Wind medals. Do you know anything about them? Just a miniatures company. They're fairly small. I'm right. surprised. Oh, they're... here's one we do know. Mayfair. Right. I give Mayfair an eight. And that's pretty high. Well, here, I'll tell you why. Last year, I would have given them a six. But their game quality and their customer service is improving. If they keep going, I'll give them a ten next year. I'm really... I'm I, thought really... You, I thought you weren't... I mean, hope I don't burst any bubble, Tom, but I thought you weren't too too content with their uh, customer service last year. Well, last year they I, were I cool. wasn't. I, I talked to them, and it seemed like the guys I all talked to were all former veterans, and we were like all buddy-buddy and smoking, you know, like joking and just laughing and talking, and you are kind of like the outsider. Well. It's because they didn't know who you were. Maybe not, but I, I really like them now. I, Guido Tuber, the son of Claus Tuber, said was a time. He's working with them. Will Niebling is the president. And they're just, they're just really good to work with. I really like Mayfair, and their new games are just really good. Yeah, they got some good games. Uh, I would probably give them a 7, 6. The next one, oh, we'll skip the rest. They're all RPGs. New releases, anything new that CCGs, RPGs, they don't put a lot of... Oh, here's one. Kinder, oh, Kinder Buddy Bunnies. It's made by the company who made Killer Bunnies. <laughs> it's now Kinder Buddies. Have you ever played that? Killer Bunnies? No, you know... They asked me to come by and play a game last year, and I just I was going to and never got around to it. I still haven't gotten a deck from them to, to try out. I'm not opposed to the idea. <coughs> Killer Bunnies looks like an interesting game. I I I think the theme is funny. I think it's a cool looking a cool idea. Uh, yeah. But I know it's gotten a lot of negativity on the it, internet. It doesn't really do nothing for me. Well, you know you'll end up playing it one day once just to see. Probably. Oh, if you if you guys are, are listening and you hear anything weird, we got the air conditioning on because it's really hot in Korea. So the air conditioning might be causing some background noise. If it is, let us know because we can't hear it. No, no, let us know. We ain't going to change it. We're not, <laughs> we're not going <laughs> to. That's a good point. We ain't going to change it because it's hot. <laughs> we'd rather be cool than. You. Yuri, we don't care what you say because it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the next page here has clubs and organizations. And I guess the biggest one, obviously, is Columbus Area Board Gaming Caps. Society. Bud Sauer. And uh, Gary Christensen, and um, what's the one guy that thinks he's in charge? I don't know. I don't know much about him. I, I mean, can't. I've met him. They're really, really friendly people, though. They do, a, they, do a, they do a really good job. If you're a wargamer man, you need to pay some, pay some respects to these guys when you come. All right. It shows, it shows a picture of them playing a miniature game here with Legos, which I guess is a pretty good idea. I wouldn't do it. As much as Legos cost, they're still cheaper than Although, miniatures. I heard people talking about, uh, on Consim, they were talking about Lego dice towers. Have you heard about this? Yeah, I did. I was tempted to build one myself. Yeah, so if, if anyone has the, I would like to do this, but I, I, look, I could not find the plans. Well, so if, what? if someone has the plans to build a Lego dice tower, then email We don't need me. no stinking plans. <laughs> we don't need no stinking plans. I, I, I think we could build it. I just need the Legos. you got Legos. you got billions of billions of Legos. I've those huge Legos. The, the Blockos. The Blockos. <laughs> like your head. <laughs> I don't have the regular Legos. Oh, that's it. What? Uh, I don't know. It seems so generic, though. What? The Lego. I was oh, speaking Lego of that, tower. my email address is joestedman at gmail.com. And mine is Tom Vassell, T-O-M-V as in victory, A-S-E-L. It's not S-S, it's V-A-S-E-L. Yes, mix up the letters and you get slave. 
<laughs> or Sal. And uh, people, you know, if you've got a question for me, email me the question. If you've got a question for Tom, email Tom. If you just got a generic question, you can email either one of us because it doesn't matter because we're basically neighbors. Right. And we just... So to repeat, if you got a question for me, email to me. If you got a question for Joe, email it to me. <laughs> Yeah, because if you're a war gamer and you email a question to Tom, it'll probably mysteriously get lost because Tom doesn't like you guys. What? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna get a little s secret tape recorder and record you bad mouthing war gamers next time. I'm not bad mouthing war gamers. In fact, some of my best friends are war gamers. <laughs> <laughs> your only friends. Some of my some of my best game friends are war gamers. Hey, when you're in a foreign country, there's only like three other people who you know will talk to you. But I'm not sure war gamers are as as mentally. Okay, moving on. <laughs> All right. Oh, look at this. Here's an advertisement for a company. They weren't there last Origins. I oh, know that. Oh, I wish they would have been there because I'd like to talk to them. Cactus Games Design Incorporated. They had one good game and one really bad game. Well, I'll say that they have two good games. Well, here they're, they're well, advertising the Ark of the Covenant game. Well, they have like, aren't they like sharing the license for that with uh, Uber, Uber players? Play? Who knows, but it's, well, it's a good on their game. advertisement. I got it. It's the Carcassonne I actually like. Right. Um... Settlers of Canaan is a very good. Yeah, Settlers of Settlers of Canaan is a a is a, is a rip a rip off no a variation of Settlers of Catan. I like it better because it's I like the I don't like the rant. Tom Tom will definitely disagree with me on this. I like the the pre set up board. I don't like to have to randomly make a board every time I play. Well, I do like the randomly made up board, but I in this case I think the pre set up board they did here was an excellent one. And adding the King Solomon the King, temple to this, it yeah the stones at the bottom idea. is a, is really cool. And then they have another game here, The Journeys of Paul. I have not even heard of it. And then, because we have to say the bad with the good, they have a game called Solomon's Temple. Blah. Oh, oh, let's roll for that one. <laughs> a 1 through 10, Joe. My die fell out of the tower onto the floor. <laughs> My die got eaten by the cat. <laughs> <laughs> that game stinks. It's a 1. Yeah, it really it's is. It's a 1. But because you know, hey. You, you need certain cards to progress in the game, but you have to go through the whole deck to get these cards. Yeah. So you're sitting there, draw. Is it it's it's one of the few no. games that my wife refused to finish draw. the game. We we started and we could not finish. And it's. We had high, high hopes because it was, I, it's, it's review number 100. I remember because I said that's it. I'm gonna write a negative review, <laughs> and there was the perfect game. They have aren't they do the they do the uh, redemption cards too, right? Yes, they do. Yeah. And I, and from everything I've heard. You know, some people say Redemption's a magic ripoff, but it has it's lasted a, a really long I've time. I've got a, I got a whole bunch of Redemption cards that they actually, and I want to thank well, these how guys. Well, how come you haven't played it? Because we well, trying to get a game in with you is like we're pulling teeth. Well, learn how to play it, and I'll play it. I'm really interested in. <laughs> yeah, but you're the guy who likes to read the rules. You don't even like read the rules. Give me the kinda, rules. You just look at them and you know them. I absorb Osmosis. them. <laughs> See, basically, I look at rules and say, okay, this is like Carcassonne. This is like they. This is like. Um, Pirates Code. Uh, duh, duh, this duh. is like El Grande. Okay, let's put it together. And what do we got? Yeah. You know, when you talk to Tom in real life, he talks to you like he's reviewing your board, a board game. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, Joe, you want to go get some McDonald's because McDonald's, if you think, if you rate their components, they got really good fries, but they're too salty. And then you. <laughs> anyway, keep going. Next page. Driving directions. No. Hey, well, I wasn't done thanking those guys. They sent me a box. Cactus Games sent me a box of redemption cards. Uh, to use with, this, with in my ministry, oh, okay. and I've not had a chance to do it because I just no one seems interested. No, but we will. We will we make a, 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 will. a concerted effort because I am interested in trying that out. Yeah. Besides, I got a couple promo cards in my yeah, no Settlers of Canaan game. Right. Driving directions don't need that. Hotels don't even bother link that page because they're all booked up. <laughs> and I was looking for that what, months ago. Were you? Are you staying at a hotel? What are you doing? I'm staying with a couple of gamers at a hotel. First couple of nights, and I'm staying with my brother-in-law's brother, your brother-in-law's brother, uncle's <laughs> nephew's son. And cool. Now he's I, a gamer. I'm really looking. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I'm sleeping on the floor at Gary at Gary's house. Is I'll be sleeping on Gary's floor along with Skip and Joe, Joe Yost and Skip Franklin. So we're gonna have like a, a slumber party. So. <laughs> Gary, you can stop this now if you're listening. Gary said, I can sleep at his house, but I can't talk politics or religion. You think I can go very long without talking politics or religion? No, but maybe, <laughs> maybe, just maybe. It's a free place to stay. Okay, well, so hotels, special events. Oh, <laughs> oh. the 31st Annual Origins will, Awards. Will we get past this in this show? <laughs> uh, we need a... a, a, a <laughs> that has nothing to do with What was it? that? Oh, here, this is a much better... Sound effect from the Origins Awards. 
Do you not agree? I agree. And I'm sorry to it's all a long the people. Toilet. <laughs> I'm sorry to all the people who pick those awards, and take the time to decide what awards are what. But it just seems to me like it's all politics. There are so many board games released in a year, and there are so few board games. The people who who vote on the board games don't even play half of them. It's it's. I would be more. I'd take. I'd put more more credit or more value into their origins award if they just put up a geek list and people vote on it on board game geek. Well, they don't even have to do that. They, I mean, uh, they just need to let people who play board games, even if I disagree with them. I right. Think it's like asking your uncle Bob and your aunt Vonda and your your grandpa to to say what are the best board games. Yeah, Dad, what's the best board game? I don't know, Monopoly. <laughs> hey, don't get on a Monopoly game. Now listen, they are better games than previous years. They used to have just stupid categories. Best fantasy game. Puerto Rico was nominated. <laughs> I mean, come on. And best historical simulator. It was just really silly. This year it's better, but it's still not where it could be. It's like the games war uh, the games 100, right? It's like your game won. The Origins games. Woo it's a sticker to put on the box. <laughs> That's true. And I guess I shouldn't. What are they called the awards here? The Callies. Are there nominations posted in this magazine? No, I can pull them up on the internet, but. Just go to Board Game Geek. I have a whole thread about it. You do? Well, I posted that thing about the the nominations. Um, Where? Look, look. Go to the bottom of forums there, and yeah, click on more. Then do a search for Origins. Okay. Well, while Joe's doing that, I'll talk about my fourth best game I played last time, which was a prototype game. So that's not very much useful to you because I'm not sure it was ever going to be published. But for me, it was just really cool to play this game, not because of the game itself, but because it was fun to play it with a company president and with a couple other game designers who critiqued it. It was just a really interesting experience for me to play a prototype game with <coughs> other this other weird? people. Yes. No. No. Is it started by you though, right? Well, I'll look for it while you. Uh, okay. Well, I'll do talk my about your number four. my number four game. Ooh, my number four game is probably going to be uh, Mock Day Rhine with Joe Yost. He, I didn't even play it very much, but I got a chance to sit in. And uh, Joe Yost, he reworked the classic game, the classic monster war game, uh, fixed some of the artillery rules and some other things, and we were able to play it. Um, I was able to sit in just for a few turns and, and uh, offered my, my, my poor advice. <laughs> but it was a really, it was, it was the first time I got a chance to... Uh, to sit in one of these monster games at a, at, at, a, at, a, at a game convention. I played them before, but never at a, at a convention. It was neat to see all those counters. Now, when you go into the, if you, when you go to Origins, or if you go to Origins or any convention, you go into the, where they're playing the monster games, and you will be floored just by the amount of counters. And you got to get yourself a pair of forceps so you can move your counters slowly. And that brings up an interesting question while I'm on this. I, I'm curious. I have my, a poll I wanted to do. Do you clip your counters or not? I always do. <laughs> Shut up, Tom. No, I'm serious. If, if I, a game has counters, I do. Do you? You clip the corners? Yeah. Like what? Puerto Rico? You clip the little storehouses? I don't clip them. I round them. No, if the tiles are thick, it doesn't bother me. But those thinner ones, I just like it. Yeah. I, of course, I, that's like two games I have. But still. <laughs> no, I, I clip. I, I I don't know. I started clipping corners, but I'm not. It's just so much work. Here's the here's the uh, quick quick. Um, We'll, we'll go through the nominations. Joe, you can give your your uh, opinions of each real quick. Okay. The board games. Bootleggers? Bootleggers, it was okay. I liked it a lot. Very thematic. Betrayal at House on the Hill? It was fun, but cheap. Extremely thematic. Not very good mechanically, but extremely thematic. Yeah. Ticket to Ride? The original or the European? Original. I liked it. It should win. Dos Rios? Uh. Okay. <laughs> I haven't played that yet, but I heard it's a good game. Um, War of the Ring. Excellent game. Excellent game. I would play War of the Ring any night of the week. That's true. Maybe we should give War of the Ring... Um, Although, I've not lost playing it yet, so maybe I need to play against someone who knows how to play. What do you think, well, Tom? Well, maybe I should just stop letting you win. <laughs> okay, and then let's see. I'll slide down here and see if I can find the card games. Here we go. Card games. Camelot Legends. That was pretty fun. Yeah, I really enjoyed that game. It was, it was a lot better than I thought. I, it was, yeah, it was better than I thought. It was cheap. Cthulhu 500? Uh, it sounds funny, but I'm not sure. It's... I don't know. I, I can't say anything about it until I played it. Hex Hex. No, thanks. You didn't like it? No, I didn't like the theme. Oh. I couldn't get past the theme. I, I think theme is everything. Okay. Space Shuffle? I'm well, not you sure didn't, you, you didn't played that one. Well, did you like Hex Hex? Yeah, I do. But, you know, it's one of those games that maybe... I, 
in a year or two, I'll actually have as a turkey. <coughs> um, Station Master, haven't played that, or Space Shuffle. Me either. This episode is brought to you by Tenki Games. Chang Chang combines strategy and fun. Play with pieces that accurately reproduce the real Great Wall of China and build it on the board. Test your strategy skills and enjoy the fine graphics that catapult you into ancient China. To learn more about Chang Cheng, go to www.tenkigames.com. So we'll have to go down to the, to the war games, and here's the war game nominees. Now Joe can yell about these. Memoir 44. Well, did you say this is war games? Yes. Uh, <laughs> keep going. Axis and Allies D-Day? Uh, very light. But very it is a war game. I mean, you can't... Which one? X and I's D-Day? Oh, X is, no, it's very, I'm not saying it's not a war game. This is very light, and I think it's broken. But other than that, it's pretty good. Then War 44? If you're going to, okay, if we're going to first, if we're going to call this a war game, then I'll talk about it. So you're, I'm not calling it a war game, but um, it's only a war game, like I said before, and I'll say again, if you play with eight people. And then I think it's very fun. Hmm. All right, Soldier Raj. Raj? I have not played it. Sword of Rome? Very good. Multiplayer card-driven game. Um, Bob, our friend, Bob, my friend Bob got that for me for Christmas. I'm looking forward to playing it at Origins because I've not yet played it. Then how could it be very good? I'm just going based on what I've read. Okay. <laughs> Gettysburg Badges of Courage. I have not played it. Don't know anything about it. All right. Well, those are the nominations for the three categories we care about. The, the rest of them, we, we don't. Hey, I can't believe you said this. If Bob Arhouse bought me something, it must be the best game ever. Um, <laughs> the only two games Bob's ever bought me is that and Hannibal vs. Rome. Oh, and Shin, you didn't hear that. <laughs> that was my Christmas gift a few years ago before the huge eBay markup. <laughs> <laughs> Origins Hall of Fame. Ooh, is your game in the Hall of Fame for Origins? What is the Origins Hall of Fame? Do you care? No. The Origins Guest of Honor Banquet. Are we going to go to that? Are we invited? Are we, are we Guest of Honor, Tom? <laughs> the Tom and Joe Show. <laughs> <laughs> the Dice Tower. No, 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 no. You can buy a ticket and we can go sit with people, but we don't know half of them. I mean, we know Alan Moon and uh, <laughs> Richard Garfield, but I can go see these people anyway. I know Jim Dunnigan. Yeah, but you can go see them anyway. They're going to be rubbing shoulders with everybody. Well, what all are they right. eating? Are they going to be as good as the subs across the street? No, probably not. I'll probably go get subs. All I know is that any fancy bank I've ever been to, the food is not worth the oh, price. And, and someone knows there's a really good pizza place that someone brought pizza to last year, and it's got like a million pieces of pepperoni on it. I'm not kidding. No exaggeration, a million. <laughs> literally. That's, yeah, I say, I love when people say, there was literally a million things. <laughs> There's literally a million slices of pepperoni. All right. Okay. So number, let's do number three. Number three, our third favorite game. Your third favorite. My third favorite. Uh, go ahead. Uh, my third favorite would probably be Kingmaker. I played, uh, I played on Friday. I think it was Friday, I played in one of the Kingmaker tournaments, a uh, competition, competitive game, and um, it was an interesting game because one of the players was a kid, and he was about 11, and at first I was like, I don't want this kid to play, I mean, I'll be honest, I didn't want to play with no kid, but he was pretty good, <laughs> And but in the end I ended up winning the whole thing, I was able to crown myself king, I had I had, I had had snuck around and got the victory by collecting all of the uh, the votes for uh, being a nominate myself the king. I, I made myself the solo king and I got the victory. And the cool thing was I got a little flag, hmm. like a little like medieval looking flag, and it's still hanging in my classroom. Yeah, that was a pretty cool prize. Yeah, it was cool to get a prize. And it's, it's the miniatures. They, they, someone had built a, I can't remember his name for the life of me, he built a kingmaker table, out of, you know, a big wood table with a wooden map, and he made, um, or he bought little pewter miniatures and painted them to match the different houses, the royal family, or the different uh, the different families that are in the game, the little coats of arms and stuff. It's really cool. I had a good time. My third favorite game was Maharaja, which I played one time and then two times and then three. I think I played it four times at Origins. It was just each time I played it, I played with really good gamers. Can I say something? <sighs> Don't make me flush that toilet again. <laughs> well, if you're talking about this game, go ahead. I thought you liked Maharaja. Oh, you just thought it was okay? It's okay. It's just so the theme puts you to no sleep. Points. It put you to sleep. It's an excellent game. Although I'm wondering if it's going to be forgotten in a couple of years because I haven't heard too much talk about it lately. I tell you, it's Even I haven't pulled it out to the table much lately. That's 75% of Euro games of course, you can't, are forgotten. You can't go buy what I say. <laughs> have like, I played a game lately? Yeah, it's good enough. Good point. They have a play with the creator series here at Origins. You can actually play with the designers of the games, which didn't to you me do is, the, you did that, it's didn't you? fun. 
Did I do it last year? You did it with Puerto Rico, right? I did. I played with Andrea Seaforth. And I didn't put that down here as one of my top five games. It must not have been too here, impressive. Here, scratch the Maharajas, <laughs> and I'll put... No, it, Tom's admitted he doesn't playing, like Puerto Rico. Playing Manhattan with Andrea Seaforth and playing Puerto Rico and beating him. <laughs> yeah! I beat he, the designer of Puerto Rico. Up. He wants you to give a good review for his next <laughs> game. <laughs> you know, I've never reviewed Puerto Rico, and I think mostly I have it because there's about 2,762... Point five reviews of hey, it. They, they don't do the hot reviews no more on Board Game Geek, do they? Yeah, they do. Do they? Not on the front page, do they? Yeah, it's over there, uh, Spotlight. You oh. might even have an article in Spotlight. You don't even know it. Oh, cool. I didn't no, know you don't. I, I, I don't know why he would put me in there. I was in there once a long time ago. Yeah, but I think you're still on the front page. No, maybe not. All right. For well, either what? way. For what? Who knows? But playing with a creator is really cool. It's, it's really fun to play a game with the person who designed it. I just think that's a fascinating thing. If, yeah. I, if I could sign up for all the all the people I knew, I would do it. This year, the ones I know are Richard Berg, although I might just watch that one because he does mostly war games. Joe, are you going to play a game with Richard Berg? Yes. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be like like following Richard Berg like a little puppy because he's so famous. Are you going to beat him and then come on here and talk <laughs> about how you, you beat I stomped Berg? him. No, I just want to I want to be able to duel with him, you know, with the tongue of sparring because he's so good on the Internet. <laughs> Yeah, he is. <laughs> he really puts people, smacks people down. When, when I post his interview, folks, read it. Uh, it's, it's interesting. Uh, Richard Garfield, um, I'm hoping that the Magic the Gathering fans don't over, overwhelm him because, in my opinion, Robo Rally and Filthy Rich are just two really cool games, especially Robo Rally, and I, I'm really looking forward to playing both those, maybe with him. I, 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 I thought it was cool, too, because the... In the war room, it was cool to learn some of these war games by the guys who made them because you know who's better to answer a question about some little tiddly rule that no one knows except for the guy who designed the game. I agree. It's, it's the best way to find out. I think I, think I, played, I played Forgotten Heroes. The, I played Forgotten Heroes with the designer. I played... Uh, what else did I play with the designer? I played three or four games with the designers. Not I'm glad you're asking me. <laughs> Must not have been that impressive. No, I, I just can't remember. Okay. Um, let's see who else is on here. Oh, the man himself, Alan Moon who is America's Kinesia. <laughs> he is. Uh, I mean, Ticket he's, to Ride. He's older than I thought he would be. But he has made some tremendous game. He's very big in the, in the board gaming scene. Uh, I really like his games. Tremendous person. I hope I'm... Um, what's your favorite? This will be my first time. What's your favorite game of his? Ticket to Ride. Hands down. Uh, Ticket to Ride and Ticket to Ride Europe. I also, I like Capital. You like Capital. Yeah, I do. Uh, I like Andromeda. Yeah, I don't think you like that one, though. <laughs> no, I'm I, pretty dumb. I like um, Elfin Roads or Elfin Land. Um, I don't know. I, I, I've played almost none of his games that I dislike. Knights of the Rainbow was a little, eh, but most of his games I like. Tom Wham. I played a couple of his games, but he's such a train man, I'm not sure. There's a, there's a whole section of origins for the, the train people. The Puffin Billy. They like shuttle them off to their own little corner. <laughs> Keep Puff, all those engineering people Puff, by themselves. Puffin Billy tournament. Well, look at this. We're, we're getting closer to the end of our, of our first half of this, and we're on page 18. <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, it, you know, it's good to just talk about these things, and eventually we're going to get to the events, and those are dozens of pages, and we're not going to talk about each event. No. You just go check them out yourself. Oh, here's an interesting thing. They talk about the live role-playing chess. It is one of the weirdest sites I've ever seen. <laughs> I, I didn't watch too closely because I was afraid to get sucked in by the weirdness. Yeah, but it was really strange. Did you think? I thought, it looked, yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't know what to think of it. It looked like a LARP, a live-action role-playing game mixed with chess, kind of, sort of, and there was a guy standing up and chatting, and it looked like everyone was having a lot of fun, but I've seen people have a lot of fun doing really stupid things before, and so I just sidled off. Well, they had the, uh, the Save Doctor Lucky, right? The full size, or whatever. Yeah, and you know, I missed that. I think I would have went done it. Just, just just to be involved in a life-size game, I thought would I be cool. I think I would have passed on that one. That's because you hate Kill Dr. Lucky, <laughs> except the fact that he dies. <laughs> exactly. I'd like to go break it. Then they have Andy Looney is playing all his games against, He's gonna. I guess he's going to go from one table to the next table, playing against everybody. Like Kind of like the, who was that, Gary Kasparov did it in chess, where he would go play like 20 people at one time. So Andrew Looney, who is the president of Looney Labs, who makes games like Chrononauts, Mm -hmm. and Flux and uh, Ice House. Uh, there's a, usually a wide range of opinions on all his games, especially Flux. What's your opinion on Flux, Joe? 
Have you played it? Yeah, I played it. I think it stinks. <laughs> okay. It's a game that could be over in <clears throat> a game that could be over in five minutes or two hours. You never yeah, know. and that's just I don't really like it either. Chrononauts is almost the same thing, except it has such a cool historical theme. I I like it. Yeah. Uh, and, and Ice House is a great game, Spe especially Ice when, House. when Zendo. Zendo. Okay, I like Zendo's Zendo. a form of Ice House, and Zendo's a lot of fun. So, Andy, Looney, and he, he is very easy to spot. Richard Berg just posted that he's not going to Origins. Is this a joke? <laughs> oh. Well, according to concept, Richard, he just posted, you know, in Richard, it could be a joke. I doubt it. Bad news, alas, I have to cancel my attendance to Origins. My house is closing, but we'll see. Oh. I was looking forward to meeting Richard. Hmm. Me too. Well, I guess the good news is maybe they'll get another designer to take his place. Yeah. So, always look at the bright side. They can maybe the last few, Tom. Back to Andrew Looney. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't designed a game. <laughs> I'm already going. Um, Andrew Looney, he's very easy to recognize, and his whole crew. They wear these white lab coats. Yeah, they're they, some weirdos. They look, and I, and I don't mean to insult them in any way, but they look like they Stoners. may be on drugs. <laughs> Stoners. They act like they may be on drugs. They're very crazy insane, and that's very interesting. And I, when I walk in the room, I look around and then go back out. But Zendo, some of their games are fun. I'll probably stop by, just mm -hmm. even just to look. So, oh, you heard it here first, folks. No, probably <laughs> not. By the time we post this, everyone and their brother knows that Richard Berg won't come. Yeah. Or maybe he will come. Hey, they got giant-sized Junta. Uh, or Junta? I guess it's Junta. I almost it? bought that game last year. I, it, looked re it looked interesting. The guy it. who sold it to me, or who was trying to sell it to me, really talked like, this is one of the last two copies in the world. The world! $50. It's a bargain. <laughs> and I didn't know enough about it. It's a backstabbing game. Sounds apparently. good to me. <laughs> so I wouldn't be surprised if Joe came home with a copy eventually. Right. And let's see. Any other interesting things on this page? A life-size haunting house. Hey, not only can your game be garbage, but you can make it huge garbage. <laughs> you don't like that game, do you? I despise haunting house. Here, oh. here's, here's how the game plays. Decide what you're going to do, and then roll, roll randomly to see what happens. Decide what you're going to do, and then roll randomly to see what happens. How much do your decisions affect the game? They don't. <laughs> wow. It's not that bad. That's so much fun. Let's play it again. Uh, I like it more than you. That's rare. That's really rare. It is. It is rare, but I really despise the game. I think now I like they have a, I like a second floor, and then they're adding a third one. I mean, ooh, let's <laughs> let's move from. I think I like it more than you because my, my wife liked it. So. I think Joe likes it more than me because he owns it. <laughs> I don't own it anymore. I think I traded it. Did you? Maybe. I have a look. You should have. <laughs> so giant size. So this time I could actually not only my character's stuck inside the house, but I'm stuck inside the house. Is that what it is? Is it going to be you are on the board? Oh, my goodness. You're trapped <laughs> in insanity. Folks, you didn't pay $50 to go not have fun. Don't do this. Hey, it says here that children under seven years old are free. Think I can pass for under seven? <laughs> <laughs> and then they have a we, – we'd be remiss if we didn't mention this. The Christian Gamers Guild is a Ooh. Yahoo group. I'm a member of them. I don't know if Joe is. They Gamers got, Choice Voting Deadline. Did you, don't, did you vote, Tom? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. But I will. Um, Joe's not a member of this group, and I don't know if he would even be interested in it because they seem to talk primarily about role-playing games, but they're having a, a, a service and a, a get-together A Christian on the Interfaith? Sunday. What is it called? A Christian Interfaith Worship Service. No, actually, I, I, got, I got to hook up with some guys in the war room that are closer to what uh, my faith is, and uh, I'll probably be going to church with them if I get a chance to go. Understood. I just thought I would mention that it was mentioned here. A writing program is going to be there about how to write fiction, and that's something Joe says he's always going to do, and I'm pretty much <laughs> I'm convinced. already doing it, so you just, I never You're can, never going to write. I can never finish, though. Does anybody else out there? I got like, I mean, I got like six partially written outlines and books. I just like to write, but I never finish anything. Well, okay. Well, here's our guest of honor list. Oh, what before we do guest of honor, I guess we should do our second. Yeah. How much time do we have left in this first show? Uh, maybe ten minutes. Ten more minutes? Okay. Uh, where were we at? Number two? Yes. Number two for me was Advanced Squad Leader with Mark Pixkevich. He's like a big, if you know anything about ASL, Mark is one of the big wigs in ASL. He knows it all. And for him to teach me the game, I had owned a game for years and I had not played, I had played Squad Leader but not ASL. And he taught me ASL and we played four or five times and 
it was a blast. I really love ASL, and I wish I had more time, like maybe a, another 20 years added to my lifespan where I could devote to just to ASL. <laughs> hmm. Want to play ASL after this time? No. My second favorite <laughs> game was Ticket to Ride. It was a special version that Mike Fitzgerald had brought in that was a photocopied map of a city in France, I believe. I'm not sure where it was. It was just the first time I had played Ticket to Ride on a different map. Now I played it, Ticket to Ride Europe. But it was a really fun game. It was really tight. It was a lot different. And it was a three-player game. I cannot recall who the third person was. I'm so sorry. But I really enjoyed that. You don't care about you. Well, <laughs> anyway. The guest of honor, I guess we'll have to cross Richard Berg's name off this list. Uh, I don't know. Here's Larry Bond. I, didn't he hit a whole lot of home runs? That's <laughs> Barry Bond. Barry Bond. <laughs> oh, it says he co-offered Red Storm Rising with Tom Clancy. Guess of honor. Last year they had... Uh, Oh, they had the guy. Rudy. Rudy. They had Rudy. Rudy. No, not his name. Rudy. Sam. Sam. Sam Rudy. Baggins, or not Sam. What is Rudy. It? Sam I M. No, not Sam. What is his name from? Samuel Baggins. No, it's no. not Sam. <laughs> Samwise Gamgee. Sa that's right. Samwise Gamgee. He's really he's short What's in person name? too. I don't know what his name is. It's well, Rudy, man. It was Rudy. <laughs> he was there, and. Ooh, it's Rudy. People are just like maybe lining I, up maybe by I'm the Maybe I'm just I'm just off the cuff here. I like meeting game designers. I like meeting important people in the hobby. Outside of the hobby, yeah, it might be neat to see Harrison Ford walk in a room or something, but so what? He's just a guy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand it. I don't, I don't see why I would ever want to stand in line and pay a fee to have someone sign an autograph for me who doesn't care about me. While game designers, what I think is cool is even the most famous game designers like Kinesia and Moon and Berg and Harris, They'll come up and they'll talk to you, and they'll probably remember your name. They're just down-to-earth people. Because they're not that famous in how many people the world from, as a whole. How many people from Origins do you think that Rudy remembers? I mean, we can't remember his name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sean. Sean well, Austin. No, there, yeah, there was Sean Austin. That's right. Who was there? They had some kind of professional wrestler in the back. Remember that poor guy? <laughs> oh, I didn't see anyone talking to him. <laughs> he was like... <laughs> I'll never forget it. He was sitting back in a corner, and he's like this big, huge, buff, like... Uh, professional wrestler and he's sitting all by himself in the corner and you know like there's like 50 million people waiting in line for Rudy because he's the Lord of the Rings but there's no one wanting his autograph well, <laughs> everyone, everyone walking by is like geeks and nerds you know because it's a gaming convention I can just think of I can almost see his thoughts when I walk by him <laughs> yeah I don't I don't know I just I, I think that we have an exceptional hobby here where the people who are the big famous people in this hobby are down to earth people I've met, I've met very few game snobs um, amongst these designers. And well, aren't they all part of that producers. one uh, private mailing list? The list that shall not be named. <laughs> that Joe will never join. <laughs> well, no. They'll never invite me. No so hope, sir. You're not getting invited. <laughs> hey, who about this Jack, this Jack Emirate? It says, biography was unavailable. Do you don't think the guys at <laughs> Origins could have looked up on the Internet who he was? <laughs> okay. Let, let's, we love Origins. Origins is a great convention. We do not necessarily love Gamma. Well, I, I love Gamma too because they're giving me a press pass. Okay, oh, that's right. We have to wait till, <laughs> we have to wait till we come back. All right, but those, maybe we shouldn't post this show until after Origins. <laughs> is there any other famous people? Hold on, I'm going to do Origin. I'm going to do Gamma. Oh, you're going to get the biography. I'm looking at this guy's biography. Emmer, E M M. -E I'm, I'm really, con I'm really con concerned that I, I might oh. want to see this guy. Alan Moon, I already talked about him. Duke Siegfried. Duke Siegfried has the coolest um, miniature setups I've ever seen in my life. Game down. arena interviews. Oh, Cities Think. of Heroes. Oh, I know who he is. He did the Cities of Heroes online. That Marvel game thing? No, it's not Marvel. Marvel. They were sued. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Just generic superheroes. Ah, okay. Lee, yeah, Cities and Heroes. All right, I remember now. Cool. All right. Well, we're almost done with this show, so I guess we should do our number ones. I'll, I'll no, go we, first. We need some. Ones. No, we need some kind of audio cue. Hey, we. We need to thank. Um, An audio cue for We need what? to thank what's his face first for mailing us the stuff. He's. Uh, we know his name. <laughs> I don't think that's an appropriate one for the number one game. Oh, we're. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. This is for the number one game. Yeah. Um. What was his name? Why am I having block here? Walt O'Hara. Walt O'Hara. Yeah. Thank you, Walt. I don't. I don't know. The Force is with you, young Skywalker. Okay, how's that for number one? That's pretty good. But you are not a Jedi yet. <laughs> <laughs> if only I could summon Darth Vader in here now. To hey, what was, with the, what was that grievous guy? What, who was he? 
I told you he was just a character brought in to, to wield four lightsabers and sell toys. For so the he franchise. was the Jar Jar Binks of this movie. He was like po pointless. He was cool, but if he was in the room right now, he'd kill you for saying that. And what was the point of having a human heart? I mean, isn't like all the upper functions in the brain? Why why do you have to have a heart? I mean, couldn't the, a computer or the artificial heart taking care of that? Well, they needed something that for him to smoke his lug. <laughs> 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 They could, okay. have, they could make up a cyborg body, but they can't cure well, Let me get cancer. to my number one game. By far, this far out shown any other game I played. Well, I really did like beating Andrew Seaforth in Puerto Rico. But by, the coolest game I played was Memoir 44, and I played it twice this way with eight people. Yeah. My favorite game was <coughs> late at night. We, we got up with Eric, Eric Haldemont and, and Mark from Days of Wonder, and we got out the board, and then... Yeah. We we said we played it. I don't know. We started at like midnight, and Rick Thornquist played, and, and Jeremy Avery, and Joe, and Ward Batty, and it was <laughs> me against Eric. It was, it was really fun. It was really fun, and I lost. <laughs> Although I think the reason I don't like this game as a two-player game is Tom. I've never beat you in it. That's true. You've so, always kicked my so tail. So therefore, Joe. Has therefore, it must two not. Options. No, it must not be a war game if you beat me in it. <laughs> 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 Okay. Uh, oh, so we got to page 26. Hey, can I do my number one game? No. Shut up. Right, so I'm, doing, page 20... uh, 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 I'm doing my number one game. So we now. got the page. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> my number one game was uh, Gary Christensen brought a huge uh, photocopied version of Battle for Germany. Um, and me uh, and Skip Franklin played it in the war room. It was just a blast. It was huge. The counters were the size of... 50 cent pieces. Oh, that was a neat game. It was a neat looking game. Yeah, it was just it was just really fun. And Gary, you know, he kicked my tail, but it was fun. And I, right now, in front of the whole world, because you know we've got millions of listeners, our million, and I'm challenging you right now, Skip, to a rematch. All right. And whoever, you heard it here first, folks. And whoever loses, pizza. The other guy pays for pizza. <laughs> well, I'm not involved in that sort of nonsense. I always lose games. I lose more games in our gaming group than anyone else. And then why? It's to keep everyone else playing. No, it's because you everyone stink. Else playing. <laughs> well, folks, that was part one of our origin special. We're going to do part two in one minute. <laughs> <laughs> but it'll be a week, two but weeks for you. Two weeks for you here. But we hope you enjoyed this. Um, keep sending in questions. I guess when we start our episodes after the summer ends, we'll have, we'll have tons of questions. We'll have tons of questions. And we, we appreciate those people that have uh, offered words and support. We, uh, we, we're having a good time, and we hope that you like the show. Right. So we'll see you in two weeks. This is Tom Vassell. And Joe Stedman. Tom Vassell at gmail.com. Joe Stedman at gmail.com. And this is the Dice Tower. Bye bye. Interestingly enough, this became one of our most popular episodes. Lots of people were constantly calling me or emailing me saying how much they liked the Origins previews. And so that's why we did it the following years. And Origins was pretty neat for me. The very first time I went to Origins, a few people said, hey, I've read your reviews. The second time, Many more people talked about reading the reviews, and I took a, several Dice Tower magnets, although I had a mishap where I was trying to take a 1,000 and only managed to take about 50. And then the third time, we heard some more about Dice Tower, but this past year, 2007, that's pretty much all I heard about. I very rarely heard anyone mention my reviews, uh, or at least not when joined together with the Dice Tower. And so it's good to hear that there are a lot of Dice Tower listeners like to go to Origins, and I still enjoy it to this day. Yes, they still have some pretty bad awards the way they pick the awards, but for the most part, it's a lot of fun, and it's a way to get out and play a variety of different games rather maybe than just board games, and a neat way to see some new different games that are out there. A lot of these games we talked about in this episode, Sleuth and Bang, those are old hat now. You know, I, Those are games that I've, I've played many, many times, but they're still great games, and here we're talking about playing them for some of the very first times. Well, that's it for this time. I hope you enjoyed the show. We'll see you next week. Remember, you have one week left to enter our contest for a copy of StarCraft from Fantasy Flight Games. Just email us at thedicetower at gmail.com and let us know what your favorite Fantasy Flight game is. Uh, I got a lot of response so far, but you have one week left. Uh, so once We will announce the contest winners in episode 108. We'll also be talking about our top 10 economic games. Got some more game tech, some more game news for you, so we'll look forward to talking to you then. Until then, this is Tom Vassell. Thanks for joining us today. This episode's proud sponsor is Tenki Games, publishers of Chang Chang and the line of fine board games, including Daimyo, Shark Park, Crumble, Snake Lake, and much more to come. 
Discover Tenki Games products by visiting www.tenkigames.com. Join us next week for episode 108, in which we talk about our top 10 economic games. Until then, I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been listening to The Dice Tower.